Welcome to Spiritually Raw. We expose and explore controversial truths, myths, and theories surrounding the spirit world. Guests include QAnon experts, investigators, debunkers, and skeptics of the supernatural, unexplained, and flat-out unimaginable. Content discussed on this show is not necessarily the opinion of the cast of Spiritually Raw, and topics quite often are for mature audiences only. This show is not intended to replace any medical, financial, or legal advice, and is for entertainment purposes only. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Hello, everybody. How are you? And welcome to Spiritually Raw. We hope you woke to the most miracle morning today and are also having the most fortunate day today as well. And thank you so much for your energy exchange with us today. We have back by popular demand, Victoria Reynolds, and she's going to be touching on a really cool topic. So no, check this out. it's an awesome out. topic. It's not even a cool topic. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever talked about this. So this is the first. No. I'm just going to throw it out there for you real quick. So we are going to be talking about 6D and the money tree. Right? I am loving it already. 60 and the money tree. That is just pimp. Victoria, <laughs> right on. And we're going to find out that about that in just a second. I do want to remind you, if you're new to the channel, kindly hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and kindly share also. The links for the Collective Super Channel, which our show's on, Victoria's also going to be on there, are in the descriptions below. So if you would also click on the links to the Collective Super Channel, Again, I hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. We would greatly appreciate that. And again, if you are really looking for those breakthroughs and really just having that need that little extra push to help get you to the other side for these through this ascension that we're all going through, don't forget to visit our friends at hempworks.com forward slash spiritually raw. Yes. And if you are struggling for at sleep from sleeping at night, I can only say <laughs> From our using the hemp works, melatonin has been yes. a god send. Like I feel like I'm sleeping like a 16 year old again. It's yes, the best. and we all know that sleeping, getting a good night's sleep, and resting that's when your body heals the most. Yeah, so check it out, everybody. Thank it's you very excellent. much. And again, our good friend Victoria, welcome back. Hi, How Victoria. are you? Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thank yeah. you. Oh, it's always Absolutely. good. You know, hey, listen, everybody loved you last time. They're like, bring her back. So there she is. And so um, <laughs> 60 in the money tree. Let's dive into that. Number one, I've never, we've been doing this show for a while, all year. All everybody's talking about is 3D, 5D, 3D, 5D, and yes, other dimensions. But they've never pointed out those other dimensions as anything specific. So 60 in the money tree. First off, um, can you give us the frame of reference as it compares to the five. Well, well, first of all, how'd you come up with that? I know. <laughs> Who gave you that message, Victoria? <laughs> which oh one? Of course. Yeah, which one? Um, well, it, it, this was actually came through me from my own, my own stream of consciousness. So it started about, I want to say seven or eight years ago. I was in Palm Springs. So I was visiting my in-laws and I had this, this hillside that I always walk up into the hills. And my higher self was saying to me that, that morning, meet me in the sixth dimension. I was like, what? Like, what is the sixth dimension? So I'm hiking up this hill and I get to the top. She said, go to the top of the mountain. I'm at the top of the mountain. And again, meet me in the sixth dimension. So I said, well, what is the sixth dimension? And um, she, he, my higher voice said, it is where money and time are inconsequential. Mm, I like you, like you, Victoria. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. And the response was, well, this, this is where instant manifestation is built, is created. Mm. So in the sixth dimension, that is where we, we create, that's where imagination creates. So here in the third and the fourth dimension that we're currently in, and some of us have reached a fifth dimensional frequency. It's a little bit hard to stay there, but that we do have access to the fifth dimension. Um, 
that's where we're physically creating and, and we and we physically work to manifest it. Mm-hmm. The sixth dimension, it's just ask and receive. So when you're How do we get when there? you're there, yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's my question. <laughs> what do we have to do to get what, there? What, 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 how do you get that tra- ticket? Mm-hmm. It is um, trust. It's a really difficult place for human beings to get to because we live in a fear-based reality, mm-hmm. and it's it's where faith and trust are at play. And is it something that, okay, so do you want to go back up to what question you were going to ask? Yeah, I want to know, like, as far as, like, getting there and everything like that. So if we get to if we get to the 60 in the money tree and then we base it on trust, so is there a, uh, is there a step, meaning that is there, like, an extra step? So I know people are using steps like meditation or just, you know, uh, clearing out, you know, their, their physical being, you know, utilizing whatever to help them clear their channel. Is there, like, an additional step, Victoria, to get to uh, to the 6D level, that's something one or would need to take. Or can you weave in and out of you're, these Or is places. it one of those things where like like 5D it's where you're... It's actually where imagination works. Huh? So imagination so is... When we're streaming imagination, that's where we're streaming into. So if I'm walking around all day and I'm thinking about uh, just, you know, just a fleet of Rolls Royces and, you know, whatever, just everything coming around me, I'm, I'm, gold, I'm, tapping, gold, I'm gold. tapping my imagination. Am I, am I streaming into the 6D? Mm-hmm. So, so imagination 60, imagination 60, that's yeah. a good way to equate that? Okay. Yeah, that's, I never that's heard of that. the etheric field. It's the field where creation is, where, where uh, creation is, begins before it physically manifests. So every seed of thought has the potential of being planted in the etheric field and growing into physical reality. You, you know, Victoria, I had a strangest experience the other day when we were running. We started running and all of a sudden I said to Jay, I'm like, that's weird. He's like, what's weird? I'm like, I feel taller. Like I literally felt like I was growing while I was running. I felt like I had grown like two inches. It was the strangest thing. So what is that? The, and that is possible only because I went to the doctor about a year ago and got my height measured. And she said I was five, six. And I was like, Okay, that's impossible because I've been five four my entire life. So you need to measure me again. Hmm. And she measured me again at five five. Wow! Yeah. So you grew. That's I grew. <laughs> <laughs> impossible for a woman over fifty to grow, right? Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like at that point, but no, I've actually been growing. So hmm. cool. You know, I want to. I want to. Um... And good, good, good on that one for you for the growth there. I, I hope that that's working out for you. <laughs> it's, it's, um, the uh, the the imagination. So when someone's imagining, so now we know that what <laughs> I want to get to the want to get to the sixty, right? So that you you go to the mag- imagination and you connect with the uh, the sixty. Is there like a from from your experience, Victoria? Is there like a okay? I gotta imagine this for so long before reality starts to start or this starts to create that reality for us. No, um, sort of. So every thought, it's kind of like you know how you know how every every plant begins with a seed. So if we imagine this money tree, you start with a seed. Within the seed is everything that seed needs to manifest as a tree. All the nutrients, all of the coding, all of it is in that seed. So if you think about this seed of imagination, and then you have the pollen that's just the ideas that are floating around, right? They're just thoughts. So you have an idea, which is a seed, and the pollen's like thoughts. Well, when when a thought actually merges with the an idea, it becomes solidified as a viable concept. So all the thoughts out there, there's like there's like pollen. They're like sperm. They're just out there floating around. They're like floating out in the you know. Spiritual and then, and then, and then, so when they're floating out there, is there like some sort of magnet that they need to connect with that been like kind of like boom? Now it's it starts. When to... It's when it's held as an idea. Okay. So you have an idea, which is more solid than just random thoughts. The subconscious is doing its thing. An idea that becomes a, a, an opportunity for manifestation for actual life in the etheric fields. It becomes basically sparked to life. 
Would we use 60? Um, would we use, so would we tap 60? So, okay, so is 60, would that be comparable or is it the same as like just the, is that where you would quote unquote tap your law of attraction? Would you go to 60 when you think of law of attraction? Would that also be that or is that something different? Um, it can be, yeah. I mean, that's, that would be where you are using the law of attraction with intent. The law of attraction is always working. It works whether we want it to work or not because it, it matches up with whatever we're resonating at. So the higher we can raise our own vibration, the better the law of attraction works positively on our behalf. Um, and the, the best way to raise vibration is with gratitude. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree with that. Victoria, I, I want to backtrack a little. <clears throat> 3D. Okay. That's e ego only, right? Ego based. It's ego based. It's not ego only um, because we're here. We are actually love embodied as life and so love exists here it's um and the ego is a necessary part our ego is actually a, a part of us that protects us from harm it's just when it has been um a, attached to fear mm -hmm. that it becomes about self-preservation rather than uh because the ego is about self-preservation but when it's attached to fear it becomes over the word I'm hearing is over aggressive. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. What, okay, so I'm going to go to 4D in a second, but I want to get clarification on this. Do we all, are we always going to have the ego? If we're in 60 and 5D, is the ego still hovering around? In 5D, yeah. In, in 60, 60, no ego. Yeah. 60 is pure energy. 60, you're pure energy. Do, do, you, do, do people actually, can they, can they exist or live? I, I know you mentioned earlier on the show mm -hmm. that, um, that, you know, people get into 5D, but they don't, they don't stay there. You know what I mean? But they can, they can access it. Is that the same with, with 60? Is that, you, you don't really, you don't really live there, right? So that's not a, that's more of just, your, a that's your mind, play. that's just your mind in there, right? Is that how that works? Well, you, you could live there, but we yeah. actually live on planet Earth. So in order to, to physically be here, we kind of, <laughs> you, gotta leave, you gotta leave here, right? To get the six kind of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's the the imaginal realm. Mm -hmm. It's a really fun place to play, but if we're always there, then we can't be present here. Oh, right, got, got it. it. Is that a place where you go to maybe at night, or uh, is that is that something where you do, do people travel to sixty at night, maybe unknowingly? Um, is that a place where they go? Yeah, 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 they can. And so a lot of times people have great ideas in their sleep, that kind of thing. Of, well, I woke up with this amazing idea or I had a dream about this amazing idea. Right, yeah. so that, okay, that makes, uh, 4D, what's going on in 4D? So 4D is the bridge between three and five. It is um, what I was told back in 2012. So we had that 3D, 4D convergence in 2012. Okay. It wasn't December 21st. It was, I remember the, the day that it happened, I woke up and I was awoken in the middle of the night with the words convergence complete, which meant that the third and the fourth dimension had finished converging. And I had been told about two years earlier that the, that the two dimensions were beginning to converge. Hmm. What I was shown is that the fourth dimension is is um, limbo. The fourth dimension is limbo. Pur is okay. it like like purgatory limbo? Maybe. Is yeah. It purgatory limbo. Yeah. So it is. It is the. It is. It's the holy place where souls go before they go to heaven, and heaven is five D. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's been so incredibly difficult and when it when the convergence first happened it felt like trudging through tar because it was so dark and so thick it's the veil of deception so a lot of religions talk about crossing the veil mm -hmm. we have to cross the veil to get to heaven on earth so that it is very dark and um really 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 depressing for people who don't understand what it is that's why i think we've had such a high suicide rate because it's so difficult to trudge through those? So, uh, okay, I got a lot of questions about 4D. Okay, so I want to make sure I'm just getting what you're saying. Is, can you be alive 
and be in 4D? Or is it only when you crossed over and you're stuck between the two worlds? No, it's all here. 4D is here. here. That's what I thought you were saying. Okay. So, yeah. so, so that being said, has 4D become more prominent now over this la over these last few years? I mean, are, 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 are a good amount of people actually living in 4D right now and maybe not even thinking about it? A lot of people are living in 4D. A lot of is people there anybody living. still living in 3D? Actually, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then. Absolutely. So is 4D worse than 3D? No. It, so 4D is where... Um, the visual I'm getting is, you know, when you go up to the pearly gates mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's like, well, you can't come in yet. We have to wait for judgment day kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily, everybody doesn't go to hell before they get to heaven. Mm -hmm. It's the holding place before we, before the gates are open for us all to move into 5D. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily hell for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but it's that, it's like the other visual I get is the birth canal. So the birth canal is dark and it's scary. Mm -hmm. you see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's the it's that space. You know, depending on where your consciousness is, is going to determine how you experience the fourth dimension. If you're already sad and depressed and lonely, that that darkness is going to be over consuming. If your consciousness is already headed toward 5D and already in the loving, then you're going to experience that more of of a mist rather than hell. It, so you're literally saying on heaven, uh, um, or as it as um, on earth as it is as in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven, meaning you can create your heaven mm -hmm. or hell here on this earth plane. Correct. Yep. So yeah. when you go to if we're if we're a lot. We're alive right now, and and those are in 3D, and uh, so there's so we're alive. Then there's those that are going to be they're staying in 3D. They still got to work all their stuff out. Then there's those that there's those that are like, okay, listen, we know we're on a 5D track here, and we're just we're on for the ride. This is going to be a time, right? So does both three every does everybody always have to cruise through 4D to get to 5D, or if you are too. totally like, hey, you're on a 5D, you're on a 5D flight. You know what I mean? Can, do, do you circumvent 4D in any way, or do you all, do we all go through 4D and have some kind of like, what the hell is this moment? I have to take another step back. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to ask? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the 4D is a bridge when from 3D to 5D. That so that you can cross over. From oh. one to so everybody's got to cross the bridge. Right. Um, and that's why it converged with the 3D in 2012 to make it easier for us to cross into 5D. Before that convergence, it was a lot harder to get because you would have to jump from 3D to 4D to 5D. And a lot of people couldn't even get to 5D because the jump to 4D was so out of this world in a sense. Because the 4D is where the, the monsters and the elementals and uh, that's where they all live they all live in the fourth dimension and the and uh good entities as well that's that's where they ex that's also where a lot of spiritual gifts begin to be activated in the fourth dimension so the fourth dimension itself was such a wild and crazy jump even if you think about it 10 years ago oh yeah and they were like oh, oh my gosh this woman's nuts well it's yeah. not nuts anymore because fourth dimension has kind of become our reality Right. No, that's it interesting. has. Maybe that's talking true. about that, you know, because um, so when when you go through the fourth dimension and um, and you get through there, right? And so depending on what level of consciousness you're at, if you're on three D, you you could see the 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 tricks and the treachery more amplified on the four D. If mm -hmm. you're in five D, you would see the you know the whatever you're thinking of, right? You'd see more of the the the, the rainbows and unicorns kind of thing, right? Is that is that the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, accurate visualization of sorts? Perception yeah. creates reality. Perception creates reality. Okay, and then, and then and then now, does one know when they have crossed the bridge of some sorts? Do they know that okay, I've gone from 4D, I am now here? Do they? Is there some sort of moment that one looks for, or does it just happen? Just kind of like growing up, kind of thing. You're just there. Of what you, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. So for me, example for example, I I go for a walk on the beach. I live just a few blocks from the beach. And I'm out there and I'm looking at the water and I'm looking at this beautiful sunsets and for, I'm like, oh, 
this place is magnificent. We live on the most beautiful planet ever. Yeah. I'm, I'm in heaven. Mm -hmm. That's all I see. That's all I feel. I, I am in love. Mm -hmm. And then I see other people who are walking on the beach with the face coverings. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I can tell, oh, that's the world they're living in. So I'm on the, mm. I'm having the same experience, but my perception of that experience is completely different than yeah. their perception of that experience. Right. Um, all right. Are, I, is yeah. that example, the mask and the on the beach, are they in four or three? Three. Because they're not even, they don't even know what they don't know. Mm. So mask wearers are in 3D. So if if you're if you're let's yeah, say their their entire lives are being run by fear. Can I ask that question about came up on the show the other day? Which one? Remember when the um I don't remember who it was. Somebody made a comment because you said if you're wear if you're wearing a mask, you ain't in 5D. That's what you said, and then that's some, what I said. And then somebody responded that. back said, no 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 that's not true. My husband wears a mask, but he's in 5D. And you said, no way. And what are you saying, Victoria? Um, I'm possible in four. I don't see five. If, because in 5D, there's no fear. Now, I will right. wear a mask when I'm at the grocery store because it's part of the deal, right? It's part of the agreement. When you go to the grocery store, the agreement on the door says, if you enter, you need a mask. Mm -hmm. It's part of the agreement. But I don't wear it because I'm afraid. I don't wear it because I, because I, I feel like I'm being socially responsible because I'm afraid for other people. I wear it because it's part of the contract of entering the store. That's the difference. So what about they're wearing it for work? Because in this scenario, the husband was wearing it because of his work. Then that would be the contract he made that with his work. The, so that'd be the same thing. Wouldn't right. it? It's a contract he did. So that was his choice. Well, no, no, I understand that. So my question goes back to then... Is that 4D or is he in 5D? Um, right now, probably it's that's a little bit difficult because 5D is still a stretch. I mean, I was, I was, it's not unattainable, but it's still a stretch mm -hmm. because 5D is all of, is is complete trust. Mm -hmm that love has us so is he like in four and a half d yeah 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 i think a lot of people are there it's like the other side of the bridge yeah <laughs> so, so there's one, one foot on and one foot off yeah no mm -hmm. for a lot of us have been straddling three and five that and that's really uncomfortable to try to straddle those two yes um and that's what i was dealing with in my own home because my husband is fully trenched in 3D. Um, and I'm trying to hold the 5D vibration and it's like doing the splits. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> do that. And I know a lot of people who are trying to do that right now because the con sure. consciousness is pulling them into five, but they're trying to cling to family members and friends who are very much entrenched in three. Mm -hmm. So I think for those of us, it's more even more difficult because it's like the ignorance is bliss thing. There is a, there is a little bit of, of bliss that comes with being completely ignorant in the 3D, that not even knowing what you don't know. Mm -hmm. You hit the 4D bridge, your mind starts to open up and see, oh, that's what's really going on. So the 4D, a lot of that, that's, this is where every, this is where stuff manifests, right? Like they're like the, the illnesses that people think about the things that's where, is that where it starts to manifest when they're manifest even greater when they tap the 4D realm? Yeah. Yeah. Cause they actually, they're actually then aware of the ability to manifest. Got it. I see what you're saying. Okay. All right. Um, I want to, uh, fast forward to 60 again and the money tree. Were you good with your, with your diagram? Uh, yep, I am. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> the 60 and the money tree. So when one gets to 60, Victoria, um, so that's their imagination. This is now where we, this is now where we utilize our imagination to co-create. Would that be okay to say it that way? Okay. So we utilize that. Uh, we utilize our imagination to co-create. Um, so is there, is there something that gets, is, is it the steps like we do right now, like meditation? Is there something that can like literally just, 
you know, rocket someone process. into six D at least to be able to start to get the opportunity to start having those experiences so they can start getting used to it? Or are we all going there anyway? We're just not aware of it a lot of times. Yeah. So we're, a lot of us are there already. That's like anytime we're in the imagination, dreamy or daydreaming about possibilities, we're there. It's just a matter of, of consciously using it. That's where visualizing takes place. You know what I've found myself so I Visualizing is consciously using the sixth dimension. You know what I've, I'm actually catching myself doing it, which is like even weirder. What was that? Like I was, I came out of the shower the other day. I was just putting a towel on and all of a sudden I just got trapped in this daze. And it lasted, I don't know, it felt like a while, but it probably was only maybe 30 seconds. And I was like, that was weird. But I've, I, it's happening. It's happened quite a few times in the past month. Hmm. Is that, am I like, am I tapping into something? Are you like self hypnosis? Yeah, it's like, maybe? Oh, it's like I go into like a, almost like a hypnotic stare yeah. stage for like, feels like 30 seconds, maybe a minute. Yeah, like you go into as into the zone. Into, into the, the zone. zone. Yeah. Yeah, is that, that's what happens, you go into the zone? Is that, is that where, is that? Is that a cross? Is that like the five? Am I in five and a half D when it, when you go into a zone like that? We'd like to share a story. While it may sound fictional, it's very real and happening right now in front of our very eyes. It's called the Great Awakening. Our sisters and brothers that come on Spiritually Raw are doing everything to help expand global consciousness and in many cases, putting everything on the line to share their messages about what's happening around the world for the greater good of humanity while exposing the truth of the deep state and the dark forces behind it all. We are living in the most unbelievable times. Some may even say biblical, scary for many and yet exhilarating for others. Together we are taking part in getting everyone acclimated to the great awakening process and the exciting new discoveries that lie ahead. The sad part is many of our amazing guests are being heavily censored, socially shamed and outright banned on many platforms for exposing the truth and piercing the veil. By becoming a viewer, you bring your powerful energy towards this global movement of other truth seekers. If you're resonating with our show, please let us know by hitting the like button, sharing, subscribing, turn on the notification and leave some comments. Together, we will turn the universal key to global harmony and create a unified world. And remember, tune in often, tell all your friends, and most importantly, may all your dreams come true. Thanks and God bless patriots worldwide.